Welcome back to Pace Immigration, paceimmigration.com, talking once again with Rachel Brown. Haven't seen you in a while, and you've been busy. You've yes, been out of the been. country, you've been traveling, you've been going to conferences, doing all kinds of things. Exactly. And right, right now we're going to talk about parental sponsorship. We're going to talk about how it works if you want to sponsor your uh, parent to Canada. And we're also going to talk about what Rachel thinks needs to be done differently. Yeah. But to begin, how does someone sponsor their parent to Canada? Okay, first of all, to be able to sponsor your parents, you must be a permanent resident of Canada or a Canadian citizen. Okay. There are some financial uh, requirements, which is key. Mm -hmm. You also must show that you have worked in Canada for at least three years, meaning you have filed your taxes okay. for at least three years. And depending on the number of family members you have, yourself, your spouse, and kids, and whoever you're sponsoring, your dad, your mom, or grandparents, there is a minimum level income you must have. And what is that minimum level income? It depends. For a family of just one person sponsoring um, their dad or their mom to Canada, you're looking at some 30 something thousand dollars. Okay. As the number of family members increases, the amount also increases as well. Okay. I know this yeah. question comes up a lot with health care. Yes. Do you have to buy health insurance for your parents? Is that the way it works? Or when do they go? When your parents has been sponsored or That's right. for the sponsorship? Yes. Yeah. Um, it depends on at what point if your parents are already in Canada or if they intend to come to Canada pending a decision on the file, mm -hmm. they must apply for the super visa. Okay. With the super visa, yes, you need medical insurance, Canadian insurance. But the moment you become a permanent resident of Canada, right. there is a waiting period of 90 days. Okay. And after the 90 days, you go get your health insurance and you don't have to pay for that. I understand. So that's how it works, yeah. Okay, so that, that basically covers um, the sponsorship. Uh, uh, I guess we should cover the draw, the way that works. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, so with the draw, the Government of Canada, effective of 2017, they, they changed the program. They decided to increase the number from 5,000 to 10,000, okay. meaning they will issue out 10,000 families opportunities to bring their parents into Canada or grandparents to Canada. Right. Okay, so it's a, it's a draw system. Right. First of all, you complete a form telling the government I'm interested to sponsor my parent. At the end of the draw period, they select 10,000 people. Okay. Right? On the one hand, it is good. But on the other hand, I see a problem with that. What's that? So they, they intend, the government intends to bring in 10,000 people. The reason why they increase the number from 5,000 to, to 10 is because they want the whole family unification. Right. Um, foundation of the Canadian immigration system as a, it's key, so they want more family members to come to Canada. But if you have to do it, you need to do it the right way. Okay, what's okay. the right way? You First of all, you have to make sure the 10,000 people you intend to bring the families to Canada, they qualify to come to Canada. With the previous program, it was 5,000 cap, right. meaning you know fully well, right off the bat, that I'm qualified to bring my parent in. Right. But with this new system, you don't even need to know. You don't know whether or not you qualify. The moment you're a permanent resident, everybody just signs up, you know, into the, the, the lottery system. I see. So no one's so really, is, they're not there's vetting no it. There's no checks and balances right. before the form is submitted. That's a problem. Because majority of the people who got selected do not mm -hmm. qualify. Okay, so... But the old system, you had to qualify and then you could apply. Exactly. Now, you apply whether you know you qualify or not, in you're the hopes that to, your name gets drawn. You're meant to know that you qualify, but what people have done is they just, I'm a permanent resident, I want to bring in my parents, they just submit the form. And the so government doesn't know if they qualify. They don't know at that point. It is after selection, then it goes through the process of, you know, going through the application forms and saying, this person doesn't qualify. Meaning somebody who does qualify is not selected, and somebody who doesn't qualify gets picked. A lot of the calls I have received in the past, either, oh, I'm a permanent resident of Canada, I, um, I haven't worked for three years, I just, you know, put in a form, maybe I'll be selected, and here you go, I was selected, what do I do? And Simple, the, you don't qualify, you right. will be disqualified, you know, your file will be refused. Right. Meaning somebody who does qualify, Missed the person, out. exactly, and it, to me, it's... Now, are they going back, now, when that person doesn't qualify, do they go back and make up for the 10,000? Oh, that's a good one, because um, I was recently at the... Um, Canadian Bar Association Immigration Law Conference, okay. and the case processing um, director of the Mississauga office, who they receive all of these applications, she was there. And in her own words, she said, you know, between the, the date of sending out the invitation to apply mm -hmm. and the date she was speaking to us, which is a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago, okay. from the 10,000 applications, they received only 700 complete applications from 10,000. What does that tell you? And they have 30 days to go. They have over 9,000 spots, right? Pending. It's never going to happen. How, how is that? It's, it, the purpose is defeated. With the last system, you know fully well that you submit a complete application. Right. 5,000 of those guys, first come, first serve. Right. They get in, right? But with this, 
any permanent resident or Canadian citizen anywhere in the world can just put in the, you know, the interest um, form, I want to sponsor my parent, whether or not they qualify. Government doesn't know whether they qualify, so they need to be some due diligence process and checks and balance and all of that. Now, this is relatively new. This is new, yeah. And hopefully, <laughs> they're I discovering hope. with this new program that this wasn't the way it should have worked out. Exactly, exactly. Are there hints that there are going to be changes next year? Well, they... Um, what For the, the next 10,000, say? What, what they intend to do is, at the end of the 90 days period, because you're given 90 days from the day to receive your letter to apply, at the end of the 90 days period, for whatever amount of applications is still left to be filled with the 10,000, let's say they get just 1,000 out of the 10,000, they would carry out another draw okay. for the whatever number is left. If it's 9,000, then additional 9,000 people will be selected again this year, 2017. So there is still hope for some people who, you know. But that doesn't answer the qualification problem. It doesn't. Still, it doesn't. It right. just gives more people the chance to apply again, but they want to fill up. The promise is 10,000 applicants will be selected 2017 to sponsor their parents. As we speak, they have less than 1,000. It's over 60 days. So we have less than 30 days to go. The 10,000 isn't filled up yet. We know that. They know that, right? So at the end of the 30, the, the 90 day period, which we have less than 30 days, probably sometime in the fall, another draw will happen. Okay, but one way or the other, they've got to solve this problem. They have, they, to. They have to take care of this qualification yes, problem, otherwise it's to, going to be yeah. a mess every year. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, um, they should. It's a good thing they want to increase the number of family members coming, which I do appreciate. They should go back to the old, the old um, system, whereby it's a first come, first serve basis. Two options I have. One, either go back to what it used to be, first come, first serve basis. That tells somebody who is really serious about sponsoring your parents to start preparing the application before the program is opened. Because yeah. if they know it's first come, first serve, and it's a complete application they will be receiving, they know fully well that they have to prepare the file before the program opens, and they know they qualify. Right. So with that, the government knows that the first 10,000 candidates we receive are those who can sponsor the parents. The excuse they gave doesn't make sense to me, that um, applicants are paying um, courier services to... Um, to go right and oh, spend overnight delivery. But those are people who really want their parents to be here. They have to go whatever mile they you know. It's also neither here nor there. The problem, exactly. the program sounds right? a little flawed. They've got yeah, to fix it. they have to. They now, have to. Option are, two is, yes. if they decide to go with the, um, the completing of the interest form, you know for misrepresenting yourself, there is penalty to that. Okay. Five years back from Canada. So they should have the form in a way that, you know, you complete your personal information and you also put in your financial background for the past three years because that's the key, right? If you don't have the three years of notice of assessment, you don't qualify. Okay. If you're sponsoring your parent and your, your, the co-signer who is a spouse is also completing the form, the co-signer isn't sponsoring your parent. It is you who's a sponsor. So you have to indicate, yes, I am sponsoring my parent. I do have for 2016, 2015, 2014, X amount of... Um, annual income, right. and I know that I do qualify. In That's that case, not, they, well, they... It's not the way it's working now. It's not, but I think they should do <laughs> so, that, right? They should, right? they should do that, yes. So my question is this, because I can't remember. This has nothing to do with the supervisor, right? Like, would you no, recommend no. somebody go the supervisor route because then they're more assured that that's, you know, that's their own program, as it were. They don't have to yeah. wait for this draw. Yeah. Or is that too difficult? No, the super visa, it's, it's a temporary resident application. It's not a permanent resident right, application. So you're not there are no permits. benefits with that. Right. The only advantage is you know, your parent can live in Canada for up to a year. Is it one year? I thought it was two. It's one. Eh? Yeah, they can live up to a year and there's, they can re, you know, extend your stay if they want to, but they need to get the medical insurance and there are no benefits. They cannot work. They cannot do anything. Yeah, okay. Just a visit, right? But with the parental, you know, you're a permanent resident of Canada. If you hit the lucky draw. Exactly. Yeah, so it's up to, yeah. it's up to the, um, the sponsor. If they want their parents to be in Canada as soon as possible for some whatever reasons, they may go through the route of getting the, uh, the super visa. But if they want the parent to have the permanent residence status, they have to go through the parent to sponsorship they have program. To use the program. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Rachel. Um, you can tell. This is why we love her. She's smart. She's got passion <laughs> for the uh, the immigration Thank game. You. But uh, hopefully, those changes are made. In the meantime, if you do wish to sponsor your parent or grandparent to Canada, this is the program as it is. Contact Rachel, and she'll do her best. To help you out. Yes, I will. Thank yeah. you, Sean. Yeah. rbrown at pacelawfirm.com is the email address. Get in touch. Bye for now.